we'll move into the unit one of our syllabus okay like in the unit one uh, high level data structures in java or uh, linked lists x queues sets maps generics generic classes and type parameters okay today my target is like let's try to cover these topics okay like let's see uh, how far that we could cover and then next class i will be covering generic types methods wrapper classes and serialization um in the last classes i think we covered what is uh, big data what is hadoop what are the um, main core components of the hadoop hadoop platform and what are their functionalities and then we looked into some of the hdfs commands as well okay like how to run some of the hdfs commands what are the different options that each command has uh, how to run these commands and how to especially how to copy the data into the hdfs and how to get the data from hdfs okay like so we already saw that okay, examples um, today uh, i think i already shared my screen right okay very good uh, let's move into the java uh, let me refresh the concepts that you might have already learned as part of your data structure courses or data structures or java or any of the um, maybe algorithms okay like some of these courses all these topics might have covered already so just i want to refresh okay like all your knowledge on these concepts and we'll see some of the basic examples uh, of these data structures okay um i know uh, most of you does not have any of the laptops or computers in front of you but you could still um, observe the class or uh, take some notes and um, uh, this class has been recorded anyway okay like you could also refer in future and then like whenever you have the system uh, uh, and you have the access to eclipse and uh, java compilers then you could practice on your own and then you get familiar more about these data structures first um, let's try to create a small project for us okay like um, this one i would go with uh, collections Because most of the things, uh, let's keep in the camel syntax of everyone, everything. So I created a, a new project, new Java project as a collections JNTU. Okay, like under our default is the source folder. It will be created automatically, and add a new. Okay. I'm not created any of the packages. Okay, like so. If you want, you could even name this one uh, under some package. Otherwise, default package would be enough for us. So defaultly, I created a stub for the main function. Okay, like so. Automatically, that will create a stub for you. And then my application name is called like my collection application. Okay, like I do have a void main here. Um, let me start with the list okay like uh, linker list let me start from the linker list downwards what is the list what is the linker list and then i will uh, take some of the maps and then sets then after that we'll go to the stacks and queues okay
first thing what is a list okay let's target today okay like list map sets okay like so a high level let me complete these three things then after that uh, move to stack and then queue okay uh, first these are the basic collections okay which are available in java and um, uh, i could say they are the basic principles okay like so without these data structures it's very hard to find out a, a productionized a java program okay. very very commonly used and a lot of advantages for this and um, uh, i could say it's um, basic necessities for a java programming language okay so what is a list a list is um, I, i'm pretty sure you might have uh, studied this one or learned these concepts in your data structures class or even in java or even in any of the we were previous courses okay like so a list is a, a, a simple definition of list is a collection of similar data type elements okay is nothing but called like a list a collection of elements of same data type is called list okay lists in, especially in the java okay like when you select a collection these um, data structures are readily available okay like only thing is you need to import the api and then you could use it um, uh, and you need not implement okay like much of these data structures they are already available in the in the uh, java uh, collections as part of java collections framework let's see that first there are two types of lists okay like uh, uh, error list and linker list okay uh, these data structures as designed such a way that okay like this will be suitable for any of the data types okay they are not restricted to use only for a particular data type but they are widely open and you could use it for any of the data types but when you say like a list is a collection of elements of the same type so the type would be any any data type whether it can be a primitive data type or whether it can be derived or whether it can be any type of okay like a uh, customized classes okay like a uh, type of the subject as well okay like so technically okay you could define a list of any data type okay they're independent of the uh, data types so first thing is let's try to let, let's try to declare an error, de declare an error list okay like so uh error list okay like uh, just for a simplicity, okay, let's take any uh, integer data type. Okay, like I could say my here list equal to new. Anyway, um, here, okay, like um, I could go more deeper way okay like how we were defining like this and what are uh, this one since it is not a java class i'm not going into the deeper dive of this one but whenever if you are not if it is not clear or um, if it is not clear or if you need more uh, explanation or if you want to uh, um, give me more deeper dive of this concept then let me know and then i will go into that one Okay, like, but my assumptions are uh, all of you has basic Java programming knowledge, and also you already covered data structures as well as part of your courses. So that is the reason I'm not going to the deeper dive. Uh, 
Okay, you could say control shift O. Okay, you could say control shift O will automatically add the uh, missing import statement. Okay, like whenever you write some, whenever you use some API, okay, like for whatever the libraries that are available, just press control shift O, then it will automatically add the uh, missing imports. By the way, all the all the analysts, I think most of the collections are available in the Java util. Okay, let's Java util is the library. I think that today we are discussing everything is available in the Java util. Okay, so I defined this error list. Um, error list will allow us, okay, like to how some of the characteristics of an array and some characteristics of the list. Okay, like so that is the reason error list is a very, very important and um, uh, it's heavily used as well in most of the Java. Okay, like that. here as a default, it will allow you to have a random access. So if you know the what position of the array that you are looking on, you could simply say array of seven. Okay, like that will that will give you exactly the eighth element in an array. All right, array index always starts from okay, like zero. So the first element in array will be accessed to up zero. For example, um, maybe I'm going deeper dive into the array here, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's, it, it will allow you to access randomly. Uh, similarly, even the array list as array list also will allow you okay, like to access the elements based on their positions. Okay, the next one is um, when you say array, obviously like you need to specify the size of the array at the time of compilation itself. Okay, like and it will not and whereas error list will allow you to increase the size of the array dynamically, okay, like as per the needed. Okay, like so here I do have the my error list. Okay, like so um, uh, you could also, since I just created the error list, okay, like let's try to print out its size of the array, size of error list. So this statement will just simply um, prints out what is the size of the array. Okay, like what is the size of the array list here? You know, I can go ahead and try to execute that one. I have the size of error list as zero, right? Because I don't have any elements right now. I just defined an error list and then try to see that what is the size of the array. Now what we well, what we'll do is okay, like let's try to add some of the elements to this array. So Whenever you define, whenever you use that uh, error list variable, and then you set the dot and uh, Eclipse is very very smart enough, and it will give you whatever the possible methods that you could use on the error list. Anyway, within this short time, I I don't think I could cover everything, but most of things are very very self-explanatory. Okay, like so we need not be um and need to buy hard all these functions all the all the methods which are available here but I, uh, if you get some idea about okay like how it will be used and what is the purpose then it's pretty straight forward there okay so let's take for example just like add and then here you can do here this error list we given the data type as integers right so that means it will allow you to add integers into the list okay I just started with a hundred, okay, like so that it will be easy, okay, like um, for us uh, to debug in or to do any of the processing. I just added one more thing. Oh, sorry, I'm not add all. Yeah. You could add the elements of one error list to another another error list. That's what it add all is about. Okay, like so. There are a lot of um, 
methods are available okay like you could use so now i added like a four elements to the error list maybe i could uh, i could use the same statement to see the what if what would be the size of the error list what would be the size of the error list right now after adding these elements okay now you could see that the array has the four elements the size of the array will be displayed as four so that means we added four elements to the array list uh, there are some combinations defaultly error uh, this add method will add the element at the end of list so it always go to the end of end of list and then it will add the element okay. um, instead you could also specify the element you could say like add for example um, i will add at the beginning of the list uh, so like zero and then thousand so this will add add an element at the beginning of the error list okay like so here we add that 100 200 400 thousand and so you could also specify the zero one two if you don't give any of the position always it will add at the end of the list okay like if you don't give any position it will add the end and if you give the some position if you get the zero that means it is the beginning of the list so it will add at the beginning of the list that's what it that's what it this indicates so maybe i mean uh, size it doesn't matter obviously like we are adding one more element so we will have five elements right now uh, similarly, uh, you could also remove the elements like that. Okay, like it's very easy. Okay, like so. Uh, I don't want to show you all the things, but just for the uh, understanding purpose. So you could say remove, and then you could see that one int index, right? So you need to give the index of the a data element in the error list, then automatically it will remove that one. Suppose if I give like remove and then zero, it will try to remove the element which we added at the beginning. Okay. This is how you remove the element in the error list. After um, adding some statements like adding into the list and then you process it, if you do some other things and then remove the list whenever you don't require that element in the list anymore. Then you do all the processing. Suppose by any any situation, when you want to traverse the entire list, uh, you could easily traverse the entire list. Okay, like using for loop or you know using for loop or while loop like that. But let's have let's have a look on how we could uh, traverse the entire error list. Okay. Uh, so define. Uh, define just like a counter variable okay like then counter as are equal to my here list dot size okay like and then counter plus plus okay then just type this out this is a shortcut maybe you might be knowing right already okay like so control space will expand that one to the system out dot print line and then Then you could use the get 
get off, then interact. So here, get off counter. Okay, that will give you exactly the value will be printed there. And maybe some of you will be wondering why defined like a counter equal to zero, counter why not like int i equal to zero. So never ever use just like a single alpha, uh, single alpha numeric uh, characters, okay, like to shorten your code. It will not give you the uh, readability of the code. Okay, like so don't give just int i equal to zero, j equal to zero, k equal to zero. Give something which would be meaningful, okay, which would give you more information. Okay. This is the one of the best practice. Okay, like so I mean whenever you are learning the coding, so learn the best practices itself so that like you don't um, uh, get easily uh, diverted to uh, wrong practices or not the best practices. That also would work, okay, like, but this would be much more, um, uh, give you more flexibility in reading the code and understanding the code. Here, I want what I want to use zero, one, two, three, like one, two, three, like that. I want, I'm, I'm looking on here. Uh, maybe let's don't make it as a complex. Okay, like so. Here, I will take define into position equal to okay, like a counter plus one because always the error indexes will start from the zero. Okay, like so. That is the reason. Um, when you say like a position, always display the exact position of the array. Okay. Now you try to run. Element of array list had position one with value 100, value 200, value 400, and value 1000. Because we added one more, one more thousand here, and then we removed the same element. Okay, like so. If I Comment this, or okay, like removing of the list, and then try to run this. Then you could see that 1000, 100, 200, 400, then 1000. Okay. Because why the position one is the 100? Because we added the 100 element at the beginning of the list. So zero will indicate the beginning. So, this is what like error list. There are a lot of methods are available. Okay, like so just define the yeah. error list and then use the dot and then you could see that there are a lot of methods. Um, is empty is also a very, um, very useful uh, method which will identify that, which will know, which will give you exactly the list is empty or not. Most of the cases that is also a uh, very valid case. Okay, like so wherever you are using some of the elements, like let, you are trying to um, remove the element or you want to see that one of the uh, list exists or has any values or not. So this will give you exactly. Uh, this is empty will return you a boolean. Okay, like the true or false. If the list is empty, then it will give you the true. If the list is not empty, then it will um, give you a false value there. Okay. Um, another one is, uh, I'm not sure, um, there is a very interesting way, okay, like to uh, traverse the entire list, okay, like um, uh, I will show you. So for, this is one method, okay, like I will say this is a very plain method, but interestingly, there is one more method of how you will traverse the entire list uh, for integer value. Uh, and this one would be my error list. Okay, very good. Um,
okay so this is another way like how you traverse the entire list without defining um, a plain method of the for loop or while loop you could say i mean this is also for loop only but here um, uh, for the compiler okay like it can identify that one because it will treat it as enter this as a uh, what do you call list of elements so for loop it's not only just like a variable value that you could increment uh, uh, you could traverse the uh, see here this for loop what it would happen is i'm i'm telling the compiler okay like increment the counter variable okay like by one for every iteration of this loop until it until it hit the size of the error list so from zero to okay like the uh, uh, size of the list okay like this for loop would be executed right? similarly even here what i'm telling is for the compiler for the for loop execute this loop for all the elements of this list that's what it indicates this is also the same thing but the only thing is here um, uh, the position i simply said like a counter plus one but here i cannot get the position exactly so if you if you want to simulate the same thing here i could say into position okay like uh, uh, okay we cannot remember that one too so what i could do is uh, let's take outside of the loop into position equal to zero and here i'll say position plus plus then you could say here a value of error list same thing at position Right. So since this variable, since we have a counter variable is incrementing already, so I simply use the position is just a counter plus one. But here I don't have that variable at all. So instead of that one, we defined a position variable and then incremented for each statement of the loop. So that's all. This is very um, another alternate approach to traverse the element of the list. Okay, like very easily. Most of the people. Um, this would be my preferred way okay like to traverse the list because i don't want to define all the variables and everything but this is very plain okay let's say i could say like this is um, this is a good way of writing and this is the better way of writing okay uh, my error list i think this knowledge would be more than enough okay like at least for you guys okay to understand what is the error list okay so we could access the elements of a list using the get and then using the index. Okay, like get of, suppose if I say like get of three, then I would get directly the value of 200 and 400. Like that. So whatever the value of index that you pass, okay, like it will give you that value directly. Let's take to the next step as link a list. And after that, we'll see that what is the difference between error list and linked list. Um, not much difference between these two. Okay, like very, very minor difference. Same way, uh, however, we define the error list. Okay, we need to define in the same way. New linked list. For the simplicity, okay, like for this time using the um, same integer data type so that it will be very easy to understand. Uh, okay. BMS SVHC, 
Do you have any question? Okay. Uh, there are some unused, uh, there are some uh, errors and unused imports. So you could say like control shift O. Taking care. Okay, and Same thing. It's about a hundred. Also, you could use the same syntax like this. Maybe I could copy the entire thing. You can also use that first of all look as well. So here I could say, oh, maybe I need to define my link to this. Um, link list will always give you the same order of the elements that have you inserted because we inserted at the here we inserted at the end, right? Okay, like so error list also it is inserted at the end. Um, error list if you are inserting at the ending of a list and um, beginning of a list, okay, like it will give you the better performance. Whereas link list, if you are adding at the end, it will not, it will take a very, very long time. Okay, like so. Uh, as a link list, um, you know how the link list will work because it has uh, values, okay, like stored, um, uh, the value of the next node or address of the next node will be stored as part of the uh, data element itself. So it, you could need to traverse the entire list, okay, like if it wants to add at the end of the list. When you say like add here, add at the 200, so it will again start from the 100, and then it will go to the end of the node, end of the list, and then add the 200. So now the list has 100 and 200. So whenever you are adding that third one, so it will again go to the 100, 200, and then add to the 400. So 100, 200, 400, and then I add at the thousand. So for each element, okay, like you need to traverse the entire list. So if you are adding like um, uh, maybe a million numbers, 
okay then you would see a significant delay in adding elements in the link list okay but if you are adding at the randomized okay like so you are adding at the um, uh, third position fifth position tenth position 220 position okay like so uh, you will not see much of the much of the um, delay in processing but whereas if you are adding an element at the beginning okay like link list will be better because the link list always give you the uh, address of the header node header or the address of the first node okay like so it always has the address of the first node so if you are adding at the beginning of the list then it will give you the better performance than the error list because error list when you are trying to add at the beginning what it will do is it will try to uh, swap all the numbers down the list down the array okay like so uh, but this way if you are adding all the elements using at the beginning of the list link list will give the better results than the error list okay. so error list will give the better performance if you are adding at the end of your at the end of the list whereas link list will give you the better performance if you are adding at the beginning of the list so very quickly also we could we could test that okay like we will try to add some um million numbers okay like one by one by one and then you could see that how much time that it will take by both okay like that. we could also do that one and both of these my um this error list and also that linker list they are being uh, they implemented the uh, list interface okay like so both of them have the list interface so whenever you define a common method and uh, you end up uh, passing either a error list or a link list then you could simply define the title type that is also one way uh, what i could do is okay like um, Let's try to um, add up to maybe one lakh or ten lakhs numbers. Okay, like one by one by one. So what we'll do is a list dot add. Okay, like so we'll add all these elements from here. One e six is one exponential. I love ten power six. So ten power six elements that we are going to add it. Okay, like and then we'll add all the elements one by one by one, and then we'll try to capture okay like how much time that it took okay like to add um, uh, ten power six numbers to the list. Okay, that's what we are trying to see that one. So let's try to capture the uh, uh, what do you call it? the the time. Okay, like so. This is one way how you capture the system dot current time in milliseconds up to milliseconds that we are uh, getting the integer number and that will be the begin time and similarly okay like let's define the end time after completion of uh, after completion of the loop and then finally uh, you could say okay like time taken
Um, once you have the both the list here, what you could do is okay, like so pass. So call this call this method for okay, like test list, and then you pass my error list. So first time we are passing the my error list, and the second time we are passing link list. It may take some, it may take very, uh, maybe I will, let me start with the, uh, um, okay, um, 1e4, okay, like 10 power 4, that means, okay, you could also write, okay, like the, uh, 10, um, 10,000, okay, like that is also equal to that. The first one, time taken, uh, maybe I will pass the type as well. Okay, like let me let me uh, pass the type as well. Okay, like the string type. Okay, and here time taken for So now here we are we are attempted okay like to add the elements at the end of the list. So as I said like end of the list if you are to my surprise yeah error list will not give the better performance when you are adding at the uh, uh, end of, end of the list because entire the array okay like a you need to travel you need to travel that one that's why it happened here at the link list let's try to okay like switch over add like try to add at the beginning of the list okay so we are adding we are we are just maybe uh maybe i could just rename this one so that it will be much more uh, meaningful Let me see what would happen if I want to add the elements, the elements or whatever at the beginning of the list. When you are running the multiple times, you just observe that these timings would vary, would vary significantly. Whereas array list, you, will, you are seeing that significant difference, but most of the times link list will give you the, the uh, same uh, same timing. But the array list, you will see that like it's differing a lot. When say seven, eight, 
but linked list is always giving the same okay, because it will take the same time. So that's how you would measure the uh, timing. Okay, like you can also increase this number. I mean, maybe one e five, one e four is not much uh, thing, and you could try with one e five. Very seven eighty, very seven. Tough bunch of difference exactly, and. Uh, Um, this is at the beginning of the list. If you want to add that at the beginning of the list, um, link list will be the better performance. Let's try something at the ending of the list. If you want to add at the ending of the list, okay, let's just remove that zero at the beginning and then you can try to add it. Again. Maybe you might have observed this one. So, um, Always, it's costly if you want to add element at the beginning of the list, whether it can be error list or it's a link list. But if you want to add at the end, you see that one, it's very 700 milliseconds, very seven, seven milliseconds, right? There is a hundred times faster if you want to add elements at the end of the list. So that is the reason defaultly whenever you say like add, okay, like they will, uh, the API has been built such a way that it will add at the end of the list. Seven six. So if you're adding, uh, if you're trying to execute multiple times, then you could observe that one, like how this uh, now eight and six. Whenever you are trying to run multiple times, then you will see that. that way. So that is the um, a major differences between uh, error list and linked list. Okay. Let's switch over uh, to uh, to the maps. Okay. Uh, let me define. Uh, I could have an example. Okay, like maybe I could go through that one very quickly. Um, at least I want to cover something meaningful things. Okay. Uh, map. What is a map? Map is a collection of the virtual store key value pairs okay uh, rather as a list it will store this collection of same data type um, uh, map will store just like a key and value pairs there will be a key and then corresponding value so key can be a, a primitive data type and also a non primitive data types so like a, uh, object or classes uh, any Object of any of the class also you could define, but here for the simple uh, for the simplicity, as I define as an integer and a string. So uh, here the first one is called like a key. Always key start key comes before the value. Okay, like the key and then the value. This is the key and then this is the value. Okay. Um, there are three types exactly in the maps. Okay, like one is called uh, all the all these three like hash map, uh, linked hash map, and tree map. These are the three different types of uh, map based collections in Java. Uh, so how to add elements into the hash uh, into the map? Okay, you can just simply my hash map with that put. Okay, like you can pass some value and then the string. Because here that define the hash map as integer and string. So integer and then string, integer and then string. I just like take the integer as a, a key, like a hundred, and then I, I just put it in a words as its value. So um, uh, if you want to here in the link, in the, especially in the array list or link list, you could access the element based on the position. Okay, like sometimes you, you don't know what position that you set some value. So, but you know, some of the uh, instead of the position, okay, like there is a way 
if you know the key okay like what is the key suppose if i pass 100 then i will do the i will get the uh, word format of the 100 numeric 100 if i pass 200 i will get the um, uh, word format of the numeric 200 for representation like that okay like if you have a set of key value pairs then the map would be much more ideal and the accessible time for a any element in a map is very much faster you say like um, even though my map has a million million key value pairs i would just say like map that get and then i will pass the key it will give me the very very fast map. And there is no other uh, collection in Java which will give you uh, that much of performance. So the random looking or uh, random access for any of the elements exist in the uh, hash map okay, will give you the um, in less time. Very, very, it will be the better performance, especially for the lookups. Uh, again, this is this is the way uh, like how you will traverse the entire map. I don't have much time. Okay, I like to uh, write down the code. That is the reason I'm just showing this one. Um, this hash map okay like has a method called like key set okay which will return all the keys of the map. So here 100, 200, 400. Maybe sometimes what would uh, you might be wondering um, uh, what would happen if we give the same key okay like so if you give the same key like here i have the 100 again 100 100 100 100 like this so uh, always it will override the value if the key value pair exists in the map and if you try to insert the same key value okay like it will override the previous value and it will uh, uh, it will keep the latest value that it will be added okay yeah, of course, we could also run this program and then uh, can show you as well. Okay, like so. This is one way. Uh, so get all the keys of a hash map and then traverse that list. Traverse that set basically. Like traverse that set. It is how you uh, how we traverse the entire link list. Okay, like we could also uh, traverse the entire hash map. And the next one. Uh, you could also define as map dot entry. Okay, like so. This is each. You could also traverse the entire map. Okay, like so. It's called like an entry set. It has both key and then the value pair as well. So if you select get key, it will print out the key value, and get value, it will print out the value. Maybe I could say like this one. There are uh, multiple ways how you traverse the uh, map. So here I could say key. And this one, I know. I mean, it's not a Java class. Basically, like we are, whatever we are learning is a big data here. And what are the? Um, just I'm trying to cover what are the uh, elements that have been mentioned in the syllabus. Okay, like without uh, without missing that one. So I'm not going into the deeper uh, deeper dive into this. The second one uh, here, the hash map. Whenever you write the elements into the hash map, okay, like so internally it will calculate the hash code, okay, uh, and then it will insert in the order of the hash codes. So I inserted like here 200, 400, 10, 200, 400, uh, 200, 400, 100, like this, okay, like um, there is no guarantee that, okay, like whenever you are traversing the entire hash map. It will not be guaranteed that you will get the same order as 200, 400, 100. You may get the same order as well sometimes, but it's not guaranteed that you always get the same order. But whereas if you if you use a linked hash map instead of hash map, okay, you get the same order in which you inserted the data. So here I inserted 200, 400, and 100. So you always get the same order here. First, it will print the 200, second, it will print the 400, third, it will print the 100. Because the link list is always like that. Link list will um, um, will insert the first element and it will insert the next element and it will insert the next element and it will insert the next element. That's why this will be called as a linked hash map. So every value will be linked to a previous one. Third type, third type of map is called like a tree map. Okay. Uh, in the, in, the, in the tree map, uh, 
you always get all the keys okay like in the natural order of that one and typically it will be sorted by the keys so here if i added like 200 400 and 100 so when you traverse this entire list so you will see the keys will be ordered by so 100 200 400 like that we'll we'll uh we'll execute this program and then we will see that what is the output of that one and then i can explain that much more better way so if you so here these are all the hash map values but if you closely observe i inserted starting with 200 400 and 100 but when i traverse the hash map i may get like 400 100 200 400 100 200 like see sorry first three elements this is the ones 400 i think i i define the traversing in two times here okay like let me let me comment this it will be clear here so in the hash map here 400 100 200 typically whatever maybe i but i just inserted 200 400 100 see it changed order to 400 100 and 200 so hash map, when you insert the data into a hash map, okay, like so, it will calculate the hash code and according, as per the hash code, it will uh, sort out the keys. Okay, like it's not the value of the key. Okay, the hash value of the key, okay, like will be used for sorting uh, and based on that hash code value only, it will sort out all the keys but whereas in the linked hash map i inserted 200 i inserted 400 i inserted the 100 so i will get the same order in the tree map okay like so whatever maybe whatever maybe the values that i inserted it will always be sorted out 100 200 and then 400 okay. that they, these are the um, fundamental differences what is hash function it uses to map? Okay, like I got a question from James T. Ujanagaram. Uh, what is hash function it uses to map? Um, it, there is a default hash map. Okay, like suppose, uh, how can I show that? Okay, let me, uh, suppose, for example, uh, here I do have the public class my hash map, right? So this is what like I defined an object. Um, if you if you not defined or overwrite the two string method of okay, two string method into this into this class, so whenever you try to print out the object of this class, okay, like so it will print it will print the just hash code corresponding to that one. Defaultly for any of the object in Java, okay, like so. It will try to um, uh, uh, calculate, it will try to define the hash code corresponding to that, and it uses that to identify that object at runtime. But defaultly, any object, okay, like it has its uh, corresponding hash code value. We can also uh, we can also look for that. Okay, it's very easy. I'll show you quickly. Okay, like. Uh,
Uh, I'm not getting that one. So you could define any of this object. Maybe when you are going to the uh, next level, okay, classes and objects. Maybe at the time I will show you that. Okay, that's it. Um, every integer object has unique hash code. Yes, every integer object has unique hash code. That's correct. Every object has some hash code. I mean, in other words, okay, like so here I do have this my hash map, right? Okay, L let me let me show you this. Okay, like so I think everything will have. So here, instead of this one, just I define here the my hash map is object, right? We already know that one. So let's try to define here. And then you could see that. Oh, sorry, this is much more simpler. I don't know why I have not done that. Uh, okay. Uh, since this is uh, this is a little bit different because it will give that all the uh, it has already two string method is overwritten on that one so if you define any of the object where your um, where in your class if you are not defined a two string method okay like then you could see the hash code i'll show you whenever we are going into that uh, uh, classes and objects maybe at the time whenever we are doing the generic methods thing so at the time i will explain that in detail get hash code method yeah that is also one way i mean instead of calling that method i thought like alt hash code that it will be generated okay like that's what i'm trying now uh, next thing is okay, like uh, my set set value. Similarly, okay, like both ha uh, maps and sets, it has all the similarities. Okay, like so, map will not allow you to have the duplicate key values. Whereas in the set, it will allow you okay, like to uh, it will not allow even duplicate values even in case of set. Only the list are the ones which will allow you have the duplicate values. So even in the set is also the same thing. Set has again three types: hash set, link, linked hash set, and tree set. Okay. Um, it's instead of map, it is just like a set. So it's a set, since it is a set, okay, it has only one one element, which is called like which is of any type. Here I define the hash set of integer. I added the hundred, two hundred, four hundred. 100, 100, and 100 again. Since it is a set, okay, like it will not allow me, okay, even though I inserted 100 three times here, since 100 is already been added, okay, it will not allow me to add all these three statements, okay, since 100 element is already exist. This is how you traverse the entire, entire has set, okay, like much more simpler, okay, same as like uh, uh, other thing, whether it's link, uh, error list, link list, hash map, remap, like that. Uh, linked has set okay like will also not allow you to have any of the duplicates but when you traverse the entire set okay like it will preserve the same order how you added into the elements uh, hash set similar to the hash map okay like linked has set similar to the linked hash map the only thing is there it is map here it is a set and third one is called like tree set. Okay, like a tree set will um, try to order the natural order of the values of the set. So here, even though I added like 200, 400, and then 100, so uh, when I traverse the entire tree set, it will print 100, 200, and 400. Let's quickly try to execute this program. Uh, 
Okay, here you could see that. In the handset, I added the order 100, 200, and 400. But when I traverse this handset, I get that 100, 400, 100, and 200. So it's completely different. Maybe when I, when I try to execute second time, there may be a chance that I may see the different order as well. Because this, uh, this enter the hash, hash values will be calculated dynamically at runtime. So uh, it need not be, uh, it, it, there's no guarantee that it will give you the same value for every run. Okay, like so. If you run the multiple times, this order may change. This may have may 400, 100, 100, 100, 200, maybe it may change 200, 100, 400 like that. So it will not give you the same order for every run. But whereas linked has it, will give you the same order, how many number of times that you run the program. Uh, it will give you the same. Okay. And reset. Okay, like the reset will always give you the order of the values. 100, 200, 400, and 1000. Okay, so they are the uh, fundamental differences, okay, like between high level, linker list maps, list maps, and sets. Okay, uh, if you want to remove the duplicates, okay, like um, uh, uh, while inserting the data itself, so you could use either map or sets. Okay, uh, set is much more simpler, okay, like, but um, the problem is in the sets, okay, like most of the cases it will be useful for uh, primitive data types, okay, like, but uh, you could also insert it into the object, okay, like when it's object, obviously each object address would be unique, right? So each object will be different and adding objects into the set doesn't make any sense, okay, like it will always be treated as a different element, even though the internal um, values of the data elements are same, but as an object, it's a different element. So it will give you the. They are the three one. And the fourth one, okay, like so uh, today we thought about stack and queue. Okay, like stack, queue, obviously, like you will be um, um, learning more deeper in, in your data structure class, but high level, I will try to cover this. What is stack? What is queue? Uh, queue, first let's see the queue and then we'll go to the stack. Queue follows the principle, it's called like first in, first out. So whatever the element that you inserted first into the queue, that is the first element which will go out from the queue. So insert the elements and then in the same order only the elements will be popped off. Okay, like I so said, just like a queue. Uh, the people would be standing in the queue, right? So whoever comes to the first, so they will be served first. Similarly, the queue concept is that much simpler. You add an element in the order, and also you popped up the elements from the queue in the same order. So there is a uh, NQ and DQ. So these are the typically people would use it. NQ will be the one adding into the queue, and DQ is the one like uh, removing the elements from the queue. Add, remove is also a, a very similarly uh, used uh, jargon. NQ, DQ are the other ones. Okay, like uh, um, that is a queue. When queue is empty, okay, like so you cannot DQ any element from the queue. And when the queue is, um, whereas stack, stack will follow the principle. It's called like uh, first in, last out. So or in last in first out, Any, anything is fine, really, like both both would work uh, for the stack. So you insert the elements into the stack, and whenever you are removing the element from the stack, it will remove the element, What is the uh, whatever the element that has been added at the last, okay? Uh, you have thousands of advantages of the, having the stack, and what are the advantage, what are the, uh, use cases where you use the queues, where you use the uh, stack. I think pretty much that will be covered as part of your data structures classes. So here for our um, uh, big data course, okay, like what is the stack, what is the queue? So stack is first in last out, Q 
QV is first in, first out. If you know that, we would be good and we could uh, define the stack on our own. Stack is also available in the Java util or okay, Galaxy and also mm -hmm. uh, 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 QV is also available in the same. Maybe you could see that. How that? It's not there. Anyway, um, so we covered the list, we covered the map sets, and we'll see that what is the uh, which is which will give us more uh, better performance and way to use this, and which cases that it will work uh, well, and stacks and queues. And the next one is about the generic methods, okay, like the generic, generic classes and uh, uh, generic types. I will try to cover it in the next class. And, serialization concept okay like with that one we'll be covering we'll be covering the entire unit one and then we'll move unit two we already covered uh, working with big data uh, hdfs okay uh, name node data node secondary name node all the things we already covered that one and then we'll go with the unit three four okay. in the, uh, let me spend one more class on the unit one about the wrapper classes, generic class, and type parameters, and then from there we can go. Any uh, any any other further questions?